Uh, buenas tardes, good afternoon, and welcome everyone. My name is Sergio Rivas, and I'll be kicking off our Access to Capital workshop today, presented by Bank of America and the USHCC. I want to start off first by thanking the U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce for their partnership and allowing us to present today. Secondly, I want to thank all of you for joining our virtual meeting today. In today's credit workshop, we'll be providing you with information on the credit process. We'll be discussing the different types of, biz types of business loans, and we'll be discussing how to properly use credit for your business. In other words, the do's and don'ts of credit. We have a jam-packed agenda today, but before we get started, I want to take a moment to introduce a special guest that we have with us today. Mr. Ramiro Cavazos is joining our workshop, and he'll have some opening remarks. For those of you not familiar with Mr. Cavazos, he's the President and Chief Executive Officer of the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Previously, he served as a President and CEO of the San Antonio Hispanic Chamber of Commerce for 10 years. With his expertise in economic development, he has served as a Director of Economic Development for the City of San Antonio, Director of Research and Economic Development for the University of Texas Health Science Center, and as the Global Public Affairs Manager for the Levi Strauss Company and Foundation for the Texas, Mexico, and Latin America region. Mr. Cavazos, it is an honor and privilege to have you with us today. I'll turn the call over to you, sir. Well, thank you so much, uh, Sergio, for serving as our Master of Ceremonies today. It's my honor to be with you, and thank you for calling me Mr. Cavazos. Every time somebody says that, I think of my father, and, and so uh, obviously um, I am uh, very grateful to Bank of America, Sergio, you and your team, this great panel for uh, putting on this access to capital workshop. We love to tell people at the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce that their bank is their friend. And, uh, and if they don't have a bank, they need to uh, make a friend really, really soon because capital, is, all kinds of capital are important for a small business to grow. Uh, we represent a board of directors of 20 leaders from across the country. Uh, we have 4.7 million Hispanic owned businesses and more than 250 Hispanic chambers of commerce from Hawaii all the way to Rhode Island, Seattle to Puerto Rico and Wisconsin down to deep South Texas. Uh, it, it is a responsibility of ours to represent 61 million uh, people living in America that consider themselves Hispanic Americans, uh, the fastest growing consumer base, employment base, and entrepreneurial base for uh, the engine of America's economic future. And as we move forward, uh, Sergio, uh, I wanna thank uh, your representative on our uh, board of senior executives, Angie Garcia Lathrop with Bank of America. I also wanna uh, give a, a friendly shout out to my friend Raul Anaya, who's the president of business banking for, uh, of course, Bank of, uh, of America. And I wanna thank uh, Sophia, uh, your Vice President of Supplier Diversity, Sophia Nicot or Nicot, uh, for really uh, her uh, partnership with us uh, and serving on the board of the Greater Philadelphia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Cecilia, thank you for helping put this together and to our own Laura Sosa on our staff. Uh, you know, we are all servant leaders and we're here to really raise the quality of life uh, for Latinos especially our entrepreneurs. And I just wanna thank you uh, again and your panel, Sergio, for, for putting this together. Uh, we wish everybody uh, safe and healthy, um, a, a safe and healthy weekend and, and prosperity as you move forward. And, and thank you to everyone that's joined us on behalf of our chairwoman, uh, Alice Rodriguez and our board of directors. Uh, thank you for having us here, Sergio, and to you and your panel in advance. Thank you for the wisdom you will impart on our audience. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much, Mr. Cavazos, for joining us today, and, and thank you for your words of wisdom and insight as well. Um, I will now like to introduce you to our great panel that's going to be presenting with me today. Uh, Cecilia, let's start with you. Thank you, Sergio, and good afternoon. Muy buenas tardes, everyone. Well, before I introduce myself, I want to let you know that I'm super excited. It is an honor for me to be presenting for you today. My name is Cecilia Sotelo, and I am a Vice President Initiative Delivery Manager at Bank of America. In my role, I support the Los Angeles region, 
and I am responsible for the rollout of all small business initiatives, ensuring associate readiness for all offers, products, processes, and procedure changes. I started my banking career back with Bank of America in 2006, and I have held several positions within the bank, but mostly within a small business. I have worked directly with the small business owners like yourself, and I have also worked behind the scenes as a commercial credit coach. But overall, a small business is what I love. And with that, I'm going to introduce you with my colleague, Alonso Morales. Hi, everybody. Fantastic Friday. Uh, happy to be here with all of you. Buenas tardes. Uh, my name is Alfonso Morales, and I am the credit manager at Bank of America. I work supporting uh, the region, and our I come in to help is really assist our small business bankers and our associates with helping small business clients, uh, like many of you, with securing credit solutions and helping develop products and just making sure that all of our teammates are, are well educated to assist all of our clients with you know appropriate lending uh, for all their business needs. So I'm really happy to be here and to be attending uh, this fantastic event and hopefully answering any questions that any of you might have. And uh, I've been with the bank uh, since 2002, and so I've got some some time in here, and uh, hopefully all of that time could benefit all of you in answering any questions you might have you know, at the end of the Q and A session. So I'm just looking forward to connecting with you and, and assisting in any which way that I can. Now I'd like to turn it over to my partner, Gary. Gracias, Olofsano. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Alfonso. Buenas tardes. My name is Gracias Solorzano. I'm a small business banker with Bank of America, and I have been in my banking career, my banking career for nine years. I started as a teller, worked my way up, and currently I have been working with business clients for six years covering the city of Santa Ana and Orange County, and I have helped them with their business relationship and working capital. I'm super, super excited to be here and talk about lending in this current environment with all of you. And now I'm gonna introduce you to Wilbur. Good afternoon, when I started everyone. I'm extremely happy to be here today presenting in front of you all. Uh, my name is Wilbur Cabrera. I'm a small business banker in the San Fernando Valley in the county of Los Angeles. I've been in the banking industry for 11 years, and I've been all, all of them with Bank of America. Uh, I've been in the small uh, business division for the past five years. I love working with small business owners like yourselves, and I look forward to helping out small business owners at all times. Now, Sergio, back to you. Thank you, uh, our panel, for introducing yourselves. Uh, I'll go ahead and introduce myself to you all. As I mentioned to you, my name is Sergio Rivas, and I've been in the banking industry for the past 13 years. I've spent the last nine years here at Bank of America. Uh, I've worked as a small business banker, working directly with clients. I've managed a team of 17 small business bankers in the Los Angeles market, and I'm currently a regional small performance manager in the Arizona Southern California region, where I support 111 bankers and six managers in our region to deliver small business solutions to our clients, including business loans, which is what we're gonna be talking about today. We wanna let you know that we're here today because we're passionate about small business. I personally come from a family of entrepreneurs and I have great admiration and respect for small business owners as you're the backbone of our economy. Our goal today is to provide you with knowledge that you can use today to help your business. Before we get started with today's presentation, I wanna give a quick update on the current lending environment from a banking perspective. The majority of banks, Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo, your local community bank, we're all open for business when it comes to lending. Will it take a bit longer to get your decision on your application? Probably yes. Are the banks gonna ask more questions and be more cautious when doing loans? Most likely yes. Do the banks wanna know how COVID has impacted your business? Yes. So be prepared to have those discussions with your banker um, uh, as you go through the application process. I say that because we want you to know that the information we'll be sharing today is current and is relevant to today's environment. So with that, let's jump into the agenda. I'll be kicking this off here covering the five C's of credit. Then I'm gonna be followed by, by Wilbur who will be talking about an introduction to credit, followed by Grecia who will be covering complex credit. And then Cecilia will bring us home talking about commercial real estate and SBA loans. During our presentation, you are welcome to ask questions in the chat function on the lower right bottom of the screen. 
Alfonso Morales from our panel. He'll be answering as many questions as possible. After our presentation, we'll have a Q&A session that will also be led by Alfonso and our panel. So let's get started. I'm going to open up today's presentation talking about the five C's of credit. In order to understand how banks make a decision on, your, on a loan application, you first have to understand what the banks look at. Well, I'm gonna share with you what the banks look at. Look at the five C's of credit. You're probably asking yourself, well, what are the five C's of credit? The five C's of credit stand for character, capacity, capital, collateral, and conditions, as you can see here on your screen. The five C's of credit is, is really a system, a formula, if you will, that all the banks, B of A, Chase, Wells Fargo, you name it, they all use the five C's of credit to determine if they're going to approve you or not for a loan. Once you understand each of the five C's here on the screen, you'll, you will be better prepared to go through the application process for a loan. So if you've ever been declined for a loan, there's a good chance you didn't meet one or more of the five C's you see here on the screen. On the flip side, if you've been approved for a loan, you most likely were meeting all the five C's you see here on the screen. Before I go any further into what each of these five C's on your screen means, I want you to take a moment to realize that you, me, everyone on this call thinks the same exact way that a lender does when someone asks you to borrow money. Have you ever had a sibling, a friend, a primo or prima ask, hey, can I borrow some money? What's the first thing that comes to mind? How much do you want to borrow? What do you need it for? Then you start thinking to yourself, are they working? Did they pay me back the last time I let them borrow money? In other words, can I trust them to borrow the money? That's exactly how a lender thinks as well. So let's jump into the five C's. The first C I want to cover is character. All of the C's you see here are important, but to me, this was the most important one. Character is really about your personal credit history, your credit score from the three credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. Listen, you can be strong in all of the four, other four C's, but if your credit is in bad shape, it will be difficult to get approved for a loan. The nice thing about your credit report is that you can always try to repair it if there's problems with your credit report. In fact, you can request a free credit report once a year with each of the three credit bureaus to verify and ensure that everything that's on your, on your report is accurate. If there are items on your report that are not accurate, you can dispute that information with each of the three bureaus. In addition, if you bank at Bank of America, Chase, or Wells Fargo, you can actually view your credit score every month on their banking mobile app. I often get the question, well, Sergio, isn't that gonna drop my, my, my score because I'm checking it every month? Here's a pointer for you. Anytime you pull your own credit report via the banking apps or directly with the three credit bureaus, it will not lower your score. It's only when you go apply for a credit card or a loan that that inquiry will lower your score. Before we wrap up on character, here are a few more things that go into character. Uh, your business credit score, your reputation and your integrity. In other words, don't be on the news for the wrong reasons or all over social media for the wrong reasons. Lenders wanna do business with someone that is trustworthy and reputable. Let's go on to the next seat. I'll be covering capacity next, which really means, can your business afford to pay back the loan? This, is, this essentially means your debt to income. How much can your business afford to borrow based on the income and profit that you reported on both your personal and business tax returns? How profitable is your business? Listen, I would love to buy a mansion in Beverly Hills, but my capacity could not support a payment on a $20 million loan. Or here's an example. Uh, if you have a friend that's asking to borrow $5,000 to help start their business, you see that they don't have a business plan, they don't have clients, and on top of that, they just bought a new car as well. You might think they don't have the capacity to pay you back anytime soon. And you most likely will think twice before lending them money. So. The more profitable your business is and the less debt that you have, the more comfortable the lender is going to feel about your application. Let's move on to the next C, which is capital. This refers to the money you have personally invested in the business and also the cash and or savings you have on hand. The lender wants to know that you have skin in the game. The more capital you have invested to start your business or the savings you have, the more comfortable the lender feels. 
Here's an example. Say that I want to start a business and I personally have $10,000 saved up ready to, to start my business, but I'm looking for a partner to help me with the business. We're going to take Cecilia here for my panel. Let's see that the Cecilia has $12,000 as well, ready to start a business. And Wilbur here on our panel has $0 to invest. And, and this is just an example, Wilbur. It's not real life. It's, it's just for the purposes of giving the example. Uh, but Wilbur has $0 ready to invest. Um, who am I going to feel more comfortable teaming up with? I'm going to feel more comfortable teaming up with, with Cecilia. Lenders feel the same way. The more a business owner has invested into their own business, the more comfortable they're going to feel about your application. The, the fourth C is collateral. And collateral is really about pledging assets as security for the loan. What does that mean? Here's another example. We'll take Grecia here on our panel. Grecia is asking to borrow $5,000. Uh, and Alfonso, you're, you're going to be my, my, my example here too. Alfonso is looking to borrow $5,000 as well. Uh, let's say, you know, Grecia has a nice Louis Vuitton bag that she will leave with me until she pays back the loan. On the other hand, Alfonso doesn't own anything of value. And again, Alfonso is just for example purposes here. Uh, but Alfonso doesn't have anything of value, doesn't have any collateral. Who am I going to feel more comfortable doing the loan for? Grecia, of course, right? Because I know she loves her Louis Vuitton bag and she's going to do everything in her power to get that bag back. So lenders think the same way. When that lenders see that you have good collateral for your business, such as accounts receivables, inventory, equipment, or maybe you own the building for your business, it makes the lender feel more comfortable about your application. The fifth and final C's is conditions. What's the condition of your business? Is it growing? Is it going out of business? What are the funds going to be used for? What are the trends in your industry or any pending legislation? What's the state of the economy? In today's environment, for example, industries that have been hit hard are retail, restaurants, barbershops, beauty salons. Know that when you apply for a loan, be prepared with your plan on how you're adapting and how you're moving forward in, in the current environment that we're in. The better you're able to explain that, the less questions you're going to have from loan underwriters. So that wraps up our five C's credit portion of our presentation. I'm now going to transition over to Wilbur, who's going to discuss an introduction to business credit. Wilbur, all yours. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, um, today I will be discussing the two most common credit solutions for small businesses, which are small business credit cards and small business auto loans. Uh, for each one, I'll be discussing, discussing three different topics, why, the benefits, and key considerations. So we'll start first with business credit cards, with why. Why have a business credit card? Number one is to keep personal and business expenses separate. A lot of the times, business owners make the mistake of keeping everything commingled together with business expenses and personal expenses. For example, you might have a business, a personal credit card, but you're putting your personal purchases um, and your business purchases all together in one. It's extremely important and crucial that you make sure that you have everything separate. You have your personal separate and you have your business separate. Number two, you build business credit. And which leads to one of the main keys, one of the main C's of credit, which is character, your trustworthiness to meet your obligations, right? So you gotta make sure that you're building credit because as you're starting your business or you might be in business, already but it's extremely important as you go through the credit process and you start needing additional credit facilities you have character your credit it's in good standing personally and in your business as well next we'll discuss the benefits number one one of the best benefits is you're tracking your expenses you're tracking your employees spending as well your cpa and bookkeeper will love this um, even for yourself to track things better it'll be a lot easier for you um, number two, it's fast access to cash. If you're waiting to get paid and you need to make a business expense, you have the business credit card to use. You have additional capital that you need to buy maybe inventory or whatever it is you might need to buy for the business to get that specific job done. Um, number three is finance, ch finance charges for purchases. So for example, when you make that business expense and you put it on the credit card, you're waiting to get paid. The next month you'll receive that bill and then you can also get paid for the job that you have done and if you want to pay that bill off completely 
there's a grace period and you don't have to pay any interest, which a lot of business owners like. I personally don't like to pay any interest. If I have to, then I will. But most of the time, if you're able to pay it off, it's perfect, right? You pay, you pay no interest. Uh, number four is when you track employee expenses, you can track it monthly, daily, and also you can have them do certain transactions. You can put limits on your employees on what, what they can spend monthly or daily. Or like I said, you can also put them just for specific transactions. Like if you have a transportation company, most of the time you'll probably want them to spend their money if they need to on gas or maybe some type of repair. You can, you can have that option with certain credit cards I get. Um, number five, which is my favorite one, it's uh, rewards programs where you're able to get miles, points, cash back. That's my personal fa favorite. Um, what you can do with that is, I'll give you an example, at the end of the year, um, you can use the rewards to give back to your employees. Uh, maybe you wanna do a bonus or maybe you wanna do a Christmas party. It's perfect, right? You're, you're rewarding your employees and you're rewarding yourself and with all of these points or cash back that you're receiving. Um, the last one is key considerations. One of the most important ones is interest rate. Usually the rates on a business credit card are higher, which means that a business credit card is meant for short expenses. They're not meant to be used for long-term expenses. It's always business credit cards designed to be used for a short-term expense, uh, which leads to number two, not suited for long-term expenses. And I'll give you a perfect example. If I'm a business owner and I have, let's say, $50 available on my credit card, and I go to the dealership and they take credit cards and I decide to, to purchase the vehicle, a vehicle that's gonna take me maybe three to five years to pay off, right? And I decided to put it on my credit card, I just used the credit card incorrectly because it's designed to be used for a short-term expense, not for a long-term expense. Uh, so to keep that in mind, right? Uh, number three is cash advances. Most credit cards will have, uh, they can give you a portion of the available credit limit that you currently have. Things to keep in mind with that is there's a transfer fee and the rates are a lot higher than what they would be if you were just making a purchase. Um, it's not recommended to do a cash advance. If you do need to, we completely understand. You have to use it. Just keep in mind that if most of the times now, most places they accept cards, so you can just put it on the credit card. And now we go into business auto loans. Let me start with the why, right? Which is the first one that I have discussed as well in the business credit cards where you wanna make sure that you're keeping your business debt and personal debt separate. Sometimes having uh, business debt on the personal side might affect you. For example, if you're maybe purchasing a home and you have a $2,000 vehicle, but it's on your personal credit, now that payment, because it's on your personal uh, credit, it might be affecting you to qualify maybe for a higher amount on the new home or if you're trying to do a refinance, that's gonna affect you. So it's making sure that you're keeping those expenses separate. Number two, it leads to liability. You wanna make sure that if it's being used for business purposes, you have the liability on the business side because God forgives you get into some type of accident and it's under your personal name. It, it might affect you on the personal side and on the business side as well. So just to keep that in mind, you wanna make sure for liability purposes, it's on the business. Number three, tax deductions. There's a lot of tax benefits that go into having everything under the business, especially with loans. I would highly recommend for you to speak with your CPA or tax advisor for them to explain to you the different benefits that you have by putting things under the business. Number four, we go back to one of the most important C's of credit, character. You're building your business credit. You wanna make sure that your credit, your worthiness of repaying those loans back, right? We'll go next to benefits. It's a very fast application process. Within minutes, usually you'll have an approval. You'll have an approval letter and you can go directly to the dealer. Uh, many financial institutions work directly with uh, certain dealerships, which will make your transaction a lot smoother, a lot faster. I personally do not like going inside a dealership. You're spending I have never spent less than, you're usually spending four to five hours at a dealership when you're purchasing a car. I don't like doing that. I like going directly. I know what car I'm going to get. I show them my, my letter that's approved. Usually within 30 minutes to an hour, 
I'm out of there, I walk out. Number two, you can finance small cars, light duty trucks, cargo vans, for example, if you want to get uh, uh, a Toyota, Toyota Camry, you can get a truck. Um, those small type of vehicles go under the small business uh, loans. Number three is extremely competitive rates. Financial institutions offer extremely competitive rates. You come directly to the financial institution, and if you have a relationship with that specific financial institution, sometimes you're able to get discounts for the type of relationship that you have with that financial institution. So it's always best to go directly to the financial institution, submit your application there, and see what rate you're able to get, and which leads to the flexible terms as well. We always want to make sure that we're getting the best terms, right? So most most financial institutions offer anywhere between 12 months to 72 months, sometimes even longer. I've seen 84 months, and I've seen a little bit longer than that as well. Uh, key things to consider, uh, you can purchase a new vehicle or you can purchase a used vehicle. If you do buy a used vehicle, things to keep in mind is most of the time lenders will need to know additional information about the vehicle, like the VIN number, the mile, um, and the type of vehicle that you're trying to buy. Um, number two is you can buy or you can refinance. So for example, if you have a vehicle that you're looking for maybe a longer term or a shorter term or a lower rate, you're able to do a refinance in that existing vehicle. And that concludes my presentation regarding the business credit cards and business auto loans. Sergio, back to you. Um, so a couple questions for you um, regarding the business credit card and the business auto loan. So one, uh, something the audience might be thinking about, what sort of documentation would I need and how many years in business do I need to be in to, to qualify for a business credit card? So the best thing about that, Sergio, for a business credit card, all you need to do is you need to go inside a financial institution or you can go online and just submit your application. It's highly based on your personal credit because usually that's an introductory to credit. It's, you don't have any business credit, we'll look at your personal credit, um, and you don't need any type of documentation to provide. Thank you for that. And let's just say from, you, you talked about business auto loans here. Say I'm a general contractor and I wanna buy uh, a Ford F-150. Do I, do, can I, can I use a business auto loan for that? Or is this only like big semis and, and big commercial vehicles? Excellent question, Sergio. So for an F-150 will definitely qualify under the business auto loan program. Uh, bigger vehicles, you'll have to do a different type of loan, which Gracia will be discussing. But all you need to do is, like I said, you go to the financial institution and you submit your application. Usually it's a starter into credit where it's highly based on your personal credit as well if you don't have any established business credit. Perfect, thank you for that, Wilbur. Um, so you just heard Wilbur talk about an introduction to credit. You know, as your business continues to grow and expand, there will be needs for additional credit solution. Grecia will share with us information on complex credit. Grecia, over to you. Thank you, Sergio. Hi, everyone again. So I'm gonna go over the most requested loans, which is called complex credit, and I'm gonna explain what they are and their benefits. So as you guys heard, Wilbur just discussed how to establish business credit and the options, uh, which is great because lenders like to see credit established first before the client asks for a loan. Why do lenders wanna see this? Because it shows character and most importantly, capacity as well. So I wanna go over a line of credit first because it's very, very similar to a credit card, which was just discussed by Wilbur. A Credit is one of the most requested loans out there because just like a credit card, it is open and available to use as needed. And whenever you do incur a debt, as long as you pay it back, it's available for you to use again. So why should a business owner use a line of credit? Because it helps to cover short-term or seasonal expenses until the business gets more money coming in. And examples of these expenses that a line of credit would cover, they are payroll, inventory, marketing, or simply just a project that is being worked on and the money needs to be paid up front. So I'm gonna give you guys a scenario of when a business owner would use a line of credit. So we have a manufacturer. So a manufacturer got a new client and the client and the manufacturer got the client to make erasers. So erasers is made out of rubber. So the business owner needs to purchase enough rubber to make that eraser first and also hire more employees for the project. 
So they use a line of credit up front until they get paid fully by their client 30, 60 days later. The great thing about this is that the business owner will only have to pay interest on the amount that is being used. And then once again, once they pay it back, they can use it again. So the benefits of a line of credit is that it's flexible to manage between seasons and it can be used for short-term expenses less than one year. It's revolving. It has low fees, if any, which is typically an annual fee and also lower rates than a credit card and a variable rate based on prime. So if prime goes up, then the rate goes up. And if prime goes down, then the rate goes down. And you guys can always Google prime rate daily to see where it's at. Um, one key note is that it's important to know that lines of credits are reviewed annually. Like I said, a line of credit is for short-term needs. So when you want a loan for long-term needs, then the other option is a term loan. A term loan is typically a no of anywhere from one to six years, sometimes more depending on what type of term loan it is. So the great thing about a term loan is that the banks can customize a loan to whatever the business need is, as long as it is business related. So the different types of requests for a term loan could be working capital, tenant improvements, and business expansion. Working capital needs could be something as simple as a business growing and the business owner needs more money to keep up with that growth. And that lump sum of money can be deposited into the account and used for many reasons, such as inventory or future projects. Another reason for a loan is a term loan is tenant improvements, which means that you are looking to remodel your office or your business location. For example, we have an insurance company. The insurance company has expanded their business and they hired more employees. The business moved into a new office space, but now needs money to renovate the location by adding cubicles, painting the walls, and maybe they're gonna knock down some of the walls from the inside to make it an open space. So the business owner would go to the bank and ask for a loan for tenant improvements. A term loan, again, it can be requested to have extra cash for any type of business expansion. So why a term loan? Because it's a fixed rate, it's a fixed payment, it's easy to pay off over time, and sometimes you can pay off before the term with no prepayment penalty fee. Rates are also typically lower, which business owners love, and it's, they're lower than a variable rate, and it does not change over time. So the next loan that I wanna talk about is an equipment loan. An equipment loan is a type of term, term loan specifically around equipment. For example, a business owner needing a new commercial truck or a machine, they would come in to ask for an equipment loan. Other examples can be high-end computers or office equipment, a dump truck, forklift for construction, dental equipment, lab equipment, and the list goes on. So any type of equipment is better to get it financed for tax advantages and so you can conserve your liquidity. So why an equipment loan versus the other loans that I mentioned? Well, because it has tax advantages specifically around the equipment. The payments may be lower than any other loan. Sometimes you can get up to 100% 100, 100 financing with lower fees depending on the equipment. and it's also going to help you build strong credit on your business. Also, when requesting an equipment loan, depending on your bank, there could be potential end of lease options, as you see on the screen. And sometimes you can do an equipment line. So an equipment line means that the bank gives you a line of credit to use for an equipment for a short or for more equipment for a short draw period, and then it turns out to a loan. Key considerations uh, to all of these loans, since it is complex credit, at least with Bank of America, you will need to personally guarantee the loan. So it's always important to ask your bank what their guidelines are. And everyone, that wraps up my complex credit. Back to you, Sergio. Thank you, Gressa, for sharing that information. Uh, question for you, maybe something that the audience is thinking about. What sort of documentation what I need as a business owner to, to qualify for, for some of these complex credit solutions that you just talked about. 
So typically the banks want to look at, want to see your three years business tax returns and three year personal tax returns. Again, depending on your lender, there might be other documents that they may ask you for that are bank related, but it's typically three years business and personal. Thank you for that, Gracia. I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, we're now going to transition over to Cecilia, who's going to talk to us about owner-occupied commercial real estate and SBA loans. Cecilia, over to you. Thank you, Sergio, and hello, everyone, again. So now we have a better understanding of small business credit cards, auto loans, lines of credit, and equipment loans, right? So now I'm going to explain you about one of the most important loans a business owner can have. That is called an owner-occupied commercial real estate loan, or also known as owner-used commercial real estate loan. So similar to why most people want to own their home, most business at one point will want to own their property where they conduct their business. That is usually the ultimate goal. So let's talk about five important benefits and four key considerations. Let's start with the benefits. Number one, tax advantages. We have talked about tax advantages in this presentation, but we all always highly recommend that you talk to your CPA or your accountant, right? Especially if you plan to buy a commercial real estate property, make a plan, be strategic either if it's today or in the next five years. You need to be prepared and you need to understand how depreciation and other expenses can help you minimize your tax liability. Number two, access to equity. Instead of paying rent to yourself, uh, sorry, instead of paying rent to somebody else, pay rent to yourself month over month, year over year, you build equity little by little. A commercial property is a tool many business owners use as a retirement strategy. So when you're ready to sell the business or pass it along to a family member, that property, that asset becomes a rental, a rental income for you. Number three, better overhead control. Rent usually is the biggest expense a business owner might have. And it tends to go up year over year, or at least every three years, right? So, but when you have a mortgage payment, you have better control. You know what your mortgage payment is today and what will be in the next few years. Number four, asset appreciation. Real estate overall is a great long-term investment. As property prices tend to go up, especially in the long term. For this, you just have to be patient, okay? So last but not least, business expansion. As you build equity and your property appreciate over the years, you can use to you can use your property to finance future expansions. As we have mentioned in the presentation several times, lenders prefer to have a collateral for their loan. And real estate is a great option for that. Now, what do you have to consider? So let's talk. And I have four for you. Number one. This should be a long-term strategy, as real estate can fluctuate, can go up and down. Most of us wanted to time the market, but this is difficult. In the long term, real estate should be a good investment. Now, what do you do? Do you do a conventional loan or you do an SBA loan? Know that the main difference, and there are more, and we're going to go over that in detail in the next slide, is that on a conventional loan, the required down payment usually is around 20% to 25%, and on an SBA loan, is as low as 10%, okay? Number three, know your loan and know your banker. So before you sign those loan documents, you have to know what you're getting. You have to understand and know if you're getting a fixed rate or a variable rate if your loan has any prepaid penalties, or if it has any balloon payments at the end of the loan, right? Having a good banker that understands your business is really, really important. And then number four, another consideration. How do you plan to hold the title, right? Are you setting up a holding company, or do you have a trust to protect your assets? It is a good practice to hold the property title separate from your business, to shield it from any business legal issues or to make ownership transfer easier. 
Okay, I hope this helps to have a better understanding of the main benefits and consideration on an owner occupied commercial real estate. But let's dig a little deep on in regards to SBA, Small Business Administration Commercial Real Estate Loan. All right, so number one, what is SBA? We hear it all the time, right? So the US Small Business Administration is a United States government agency that provides support to entrepreneurs and small businesses. The mission of, a, of the SBA is to maintain and strengthen the nation's economy by enabling the establishment and viability of a small business and by assisting in the economy recovery of communities after disasters. SBA loans are made through banks, credit unions, and other lenders who partner with the SBA. That is called an SBA preferred lender. Only under certain circumstances, like a natural disaster or a pandemic, like the one we're having right now, SBA will make loans directly to the small business owner. For example, you might have heard about the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, mostly known as EIDL. That is one of the exceptions that the SBA does giving a, a loan directly to a, a small business owner. So how does it work, right? The SBA provides a government-backed guarantee on part of the loan and helps finance equipment, business expansions, working capital, and owner occupied commercial real estate, which is the topic of today. So, under the owner occupied small business umbrella, there are two main programs, the 504 and the 7A. Each program has different guidelines, structure, and terms. But let's talk about the overall benefits and why you should do an SBA. Starting with the benefits, access to higher loan amounts. Because the government guaranteed the loan, lenders will be willing to lend a higher loan amount as they have less risk compared to a conventional loan. Longer term, usually SBA amortizations are up to 25 years which equals to a smaller monthly payment, resulting in a better cash flow for your business. Number three, and I will say this is one of the most important benefits on an SBA loan, lower down payment, okay? So the SBA loan, an SBA loan requires as low as 10% versus a conventional, like I mentioned before, between 20 and 25% down payment. So just, Keeping cash in your business is very, very important. Liquidity is key, especially in today's environment. Just think about it. If you plan to buy a, a property of a million dollars and you have to come out with a down payment of 250,000 or 200,000 versus 100,000, which, which will be more doable, 100,000 for sure, right? Huge impact in your pocket, huge impact in your business. Another benefit is the fixed rate option that SBA provides, right? Not only that will give you a peace of mind, but it will give you a better overhead cost control. You know where you're paying for the next 25 years, right? And especially in today's environment, the rates have never been as low as they are. So last but not least, indeed, this is a huge benefit too, and it is a myth that SBA rates are usually more expensive than a conventional rate. Depending on the SBA program, rates will go up and down. But just to give you an idea, in the last six months, rates have been lower than 3%, right? So what do you have to keep in mind? What are the considerations before you do an SBA loan, right? We've been talking, owner occupy, owner occupy, owner occupy, right? It is an SBA requirement that you're you, your business occupies 51% of the property you're financing. 51% is the key number, all right, or more. SBA fees, right? There are some SBA fees, but they're very comparable to the bank fees. You just have to talk to your banker, talk to your lender, and understand which ones are the SBA fees and which ones are the bank fees, and know that most SBA fees can be financed through the loan. Right. Another consideration is the business history. SBA requires three years in business, and it will require three years of personal business financial and business financial package as well. All right. Now, last but not least, 
make sure that you disclose all of your information accurately. The SBA administration will require a personal background check in an application signed by you. All right? And with this, I finished my presentation, and I hope that now you are better prepared and know the main benefits and key considerations of an owner-occupied commercial real estate. So when you're ready to make the purchase, you can make an informed decision. With that, back to you, Sergio. Thank you, Cecilia, and, and, and thank you for sharing that information. Um, we're now going to transition the call over to Alfonso Morales, who's going to lead our Q&A portion of this call along with our panel. Laura, if you want to give instructions on, on how uh, our participants, our audience can ask questions, and then we'll have uh, Alfonso kick us off. Absolutely. Um, hello, everybody. So we are in the middle of a Q&A session. I'm going to stop right now sharing my screen so you can see all the speakers better as well. Um, if you click on the chat or if you have the chat window open already, you will see at the bottom of the window a little hand. So if you want to raise your hand, you just need to click on that little icon and I will be monitoring the chat and we'll be uh, unmuting people as, as they raise their hand. Uh, I know that Alfonso has been monitoring also the chat and has been answering some questions via the chat. Um, and I'm about to uh, share a message right now uh, to all attendees that if we are not able for some reason to answer your question during this session, you can send me an email. I listed my email in the chat as well. And someone from Bank of America will get back to you via email with an answer. Thank you for that, Laura. In the meantime, while we're, we're gathering some questions here, Alfonso, I don't know if there was any additional questions that you received <laughs> or if you want to kick us off on the Q&A session here. Perfect. No, thank you. Thank you so much, Laura. And, um, and thank you so much for the questions. We, do, we did get two great questions in the, um, you know, in the chat. I wanted to cover those to make sure we provided some clarity and some additional details. Um, one of the first questions was regarding uh, the business credit card and what's the difference between the personal and the business credit card. Mm -hmm. um, and, as, and as Wilbur mentioned, uh, you know, the, the difference between the, the business and the personal credit card is they're, they're both two very different tools, right? And so uh, we, we've, we've done a lot in terms of the financial institutions, uh, being able to separate your personal finances, you know, along with, you know, any business finances that, you're, that your business may have or may need. Um, so the great thing with the business credit card is that the business credit card does not appear on your personal credit bureau. And so that particular um, debt or exposure that you might have on that credit card will not come into play or impact you personally for personal financing that you might have or might require um, when maybe purchasing a home or an auto or any other personal, um, you know, uh, applications that you might have. And so it keeps the business credit card completely separate. Um, and that way that debt does not impact you on the, on the personal side. And one, one great question you can ask your financial institution um, is that some financial institutions do offer a business credit card, but sometimes that particular uh, debt still appears on your personal side. So you always want to ask and double check with the financial institution that you're applying with that it is indeed a business credit card that does not appear on your personal credit. Okay, so that was a great question. Uh, and the second question uh, that came in was regards to a line of credit versus a term loan. Um, and this is this is a little bit more into into the weeds, but when it comes to when it comes to your business and managing your debt accordingly, right? Your your business has a balance sheet, and when you think about the balance sheet, it's your your assets and your liabilities and your equity, much the same way you have a home. If you have a home loan, right? That house has a value. You you have debt that might be on that loan if you haven't paid it off and the home would have equity in it if you paid it off for some time, right? And so that's, you know, that's the difference between the, the value of the asset versus the debt. And so the same, the same thing when you're taking on personal uh, business debt, I'm sorry, the, the line of credit is short-term financing. And so it's almost like a credit card where you're using it, paying it off. Um, and, and then the business debt on the term loan, that would appear on your balance sheet and as, as a long-term debt. And so that, that comes into play and it's important for a lender. So that way when the bank is looking to provide you any additional financing is that the debt is in the right place and, and that we're, and the bank is not overextending, you know, your needs, whether you're looking for short-term financing. So think about a business credit card or a line of credit versus long-term financing. When you think about a loan 
whether that's for equipment or you know collateral for a real estate, as Cecilia mentioned. And so it's really making sure that you're using the right tool for the right you know the right job that you need it for. And that's and that's a conversation you want to have with your financial institution as well um, that we're putting the debt on you know in 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 the right area that it needs to belong to. So hopefully that gave a little bit more clarity. <clears throat> and Laura, I'll turn it back to you to see if we have any other questions teed up to to ask here from our from our panel or from our panelists and attendees. Yes, I know that there was a question about uh, the slides, if we were uh, able to share the slides, and we will be sharing the slides via email with all the registered attendees um, after the session ends. So be in the lookup for the for a copy of the slide. Uh, Claudia, uh, did you have a question? Um, yes, yeah, so this is Claudia Robles, small business consultant out of Placentia. So when it comes to a personal background check, um, is a misdemeanor something that will hinder a credit approval decision? Hey, Claudia, it's Alfonso. I could take I could take that question. Um, and so, when we're thinking about any any sort of uh, you know crimes or anything that an applicant may or may have on may or may not have on you know on in the background check, um, a lot of those items it just it would really be dependent of of the crime. Uh, I know with the SBA, um, a lot of a lot of the differentiating factors come up between. Um, white collar, blue collar. So if you think about, you know, financial crimes or anything that has to do with any sort of tax evasion, um, you know, or, or other other financial crimes that are similar to that, that's usually that's usually a big one um, where it could be an issue um, to being able to extend credit. But a lot of times, if you're talking about um, the, the a misdemeanor for the SBA specifically, you you always want to be able to work that out with the uh, a local financial office like a CDC. Right, that works on the SBA if you're looking to do, let's say, an SBA 504 for commercial real estate. And a lot of times those items could be cleared. Um, and then in terms of the misdemeanor, if the client's applying for just traditional credit, conventional credit, non-government uh, fin you know, financing, then it would just be dependent on the crime during that background check. Unfortunately, they wouldn't all you know, carry the same weight. So I, I don't want to give you a blanket yes or no. Um, it would really be dependent on, on what the misdemeanor is how long ago it was, um, you know, the, out, the outcome of that particular scenario. So I would say that would be a little bit more uh, case by case, but but you should be able to work that out with, uh, with the financial, in, financial institution or, or the local SBA office to get more clarity um, if you have a situation like that. I have another question from Juan. Here, I'm going to mute you, Juan. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. This is Angelina Sam from North Indian County. I'm the um, small business consultant. So my question was, you know, most of the time when I'm trying to apply for the credit card or even like a line of credit, the question I normally run into is that a customer keeps asking, um, like you're saying that this is a business credit card or like a business line of credit and it's separate from my personal um, credit or profile. So why do you need my information as a grantor? So I wanted to see if we have any, any better, you know, respond, letting the customer know, you know, it's, it's separate and, you know, for tax purposes and the benefits. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I could, I could take that one as well. Um, Thank so, you. So when you're, when you're, when we're talking about, you know, a lending in general, there, there's, it's always, um, you know, the banks or the financial institutions are trying to cover you know, two two items in particular, and, and it's the it's the ability to repay, um, and so you know, so two two big items are always the primary source of repayment, right? Which would come from the, from the business. So the the just the cash flow, the income from normal business operations that the business could support the uh, the debt that it's asking for. Now, in, in the event, because with a lot of small businesses, especially. Right, the personal, the personal owner, the guarantor, and the business are really one and the same. I mean, when you think about uh, maybe if they, if if the business owner has a, uh, if they're a sole proprietor, right, their business income goes on their personal tax return. Or if we think about a corporation like a Type S or a or a LLC, um, the the business revenue flows through again to the personal individual, and they would report the taxes accordingly. So there's so there's a marriage between the two, between the business and and the personal individual. And so when, when a bank is trying to determine, you know, the eligibility, again, they're looking at the two items and Sergio, Sergio talked about it. And it's basically just the ability to repay and what the collateral looks like. And so if, if a business has the primary source of repayment, that's, that's perfect. That's one check mark. The business is able to demonstrate that they're able to pay for 
uh, the line of credit or any other exposure. Now, the secondary item would be the secondary source of repayment. And if you're, you know, if you're lending for, let's say, a property, well, the secondary source of repayment would be the property, or if it's equipment, it would be the equipment. But when it comes to working capital, there's really no no other lien or or guarantee. And so the personal individual is 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 guaranteeing that if the business is unable to pay, that that they will step in and be able to support the debts that they've taken on for, for their business. Um, and and so that's that's where the bank, you know, helps helps. Uh, you know, limit the risk and the exposure. And so the personal guarantee is the secondary source of repayment. And so that's, that's, that always goes hand in hand for lines of credit um, and for credit cards. And, and again, and that's just because the bank's unable to collateralize uh, anything, anything for those particular working capital needs. Excellent. Alfonso, Sergio, I'm not sure if we have like one more minute to answer Annie's question. She entered that in the q and Is that okay? Should I go ahead? Yep, let, let's take one more question and then okay. uh, and then we'll wrap here. Wonderful. It's uh, She said, uh, they say many Hispanic businesses are often disqualified for loans because they don't have a relationship with a bank. Is the only way to build a relationship with your banker through the use of their products? What other options to build this relationship? Right, that's another great question. Um, yeah, I mean, in, in today's market, especially, you know, the, the, the lending environment's upside down with what's going on with COVID and ec economically, and we're going through, you know, you know, obviously a uh, an election year, and so there's you know there's a lot of things going on um, when it comes to just lending and businesses, and I'm sure all all of you are well aware, and we're all you know we're all feeling it. Um, so so right now, I, I guess you know that question. Yes, the the lending right now, a lot of the banks are are doing a lot of the lending for. You know their their business relationship clients that they that they have you know this um, this built in built in relationship that we've been able to see and uh, you know with with their depository balances and and just we we just know who the clients are um, and that and that was really that really came to surface with PPP and being able to do all those lending with the, when it came to the CARES Act but in in general. In general, if, if you're looking for lending needs and, and your lender's not assisting you or you have issues and that you know it you feel that the bank's not really providing you assistance, you could always always look at you know going to the SBA.gov. Um, SBA.gov has has a lender tab on there. You could fill out your information and you know where you live and it would provide you um, information outside of, of big bank. And so if you have any 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 lending needs, there are CDFIs, and those are uh, those CDFIs are community development financial institutions, um, and they also will give you information on small business lenders. And so, for whatever reason, if the business uh, doesn't meet, you know, the, the requirements the bank might be imposing, whether it's you know the the dollar amount that you're applying for, the time in business, or any other issues there, I, I would definitely recommend visiting SBA.gov to get some information. Um, they provide a lot of educative information as well to help you in supporting that debt throughout the life of that loan. Um, and then they will be able to give you just just a lot of different options if, for whatever reason, a, a larger institution isn't isn't uh, favoring the request that you might have at that time. So SBA.gov is one, and then um, even the Treasury website, the Treasury Treasury.gov as well is another good one. And you could even apply for grants, or um, you, there's a lot of resources on there for your business needs that that could be helpful in uh, accomplishing what your what your goals are for that business. Um, so I would recommend those those two sites for for additional information and support. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you. Uh, appreciate that, Lara. So listen, uh, this concludes our presentation on on access to capital. Uh, we kicked off today talking about the five C's of credit and the importance in, uh, of each C. Uh, we then discussed an introduction to credit. Uh, you know, where we discuss solutions available to you as you establish your business credit. And then we transition to complex credit and the different solutions available to you as your business expands and continues to grow. Lastly, we covered commercial real estate and the benefits of owning your commercial property and how you could take advantage of tax benefits and creating a retirement stream for you and your business. I'll end where we started. Thank you, Mr. Ramiro Cavazos and the USHCC uh, for allowing us to present today. Thank you uh, for, for being our, our op operator train, helping us navigate through uh, the presentation. Thank you to our panel for your time and your insight. And lastly, thank, thank, thank you to all of you today. Um, our hope is that you have a better understanding of credit and how it can help you and your business moving forward. 
with that, buenas tardes and good afternoon to you all. Thank you very much for joining.